In this video, I'll be describing and demonstrating the process of draining, refilling, and venting the cooling system on a naturally aspirated Porsche 944 engine. For periodic maintenance, it's recommended that the coolant be drained and replaced every two to three years, regardless of mileage on the engine. And it's also necessary to drain coolant from the system for service items like water pump replacement, oil cooler seal replacement, head gasket replacement or cylinder head repairs, heater control valve replacement, and any cooling system maintenance such as replacing the radiator, the expansion tank, or various hoses in the system. Coolant replacement is one of the messier jobs on the 944 as there's no clear drain path for the fluid. It splashes around and basically gets all over the place, especially when draining from the engine block. So it's best if you use a couple of catch pans, you have some cleaning supplies, and containers to collect and dispose of the old fluid and you'll need two gallons of coolant for the refill. To begin draining the coolant you'll first need to raise the front of the car and remove the lower splash guard. I also have the cooling fan assembly removed for easier access and a couple of catch pins laid out. You can use a drop cloth or some cardboard boxes to catch any of the oversplash and the drain plug is located on the lower driver's side of the radiator comes out with a Phillips head screwdriver and I like to try to catch some of the fluid as it escapes just to make cleanup a little bit easier and once this is flowing uh, we can go up top and remove the cap on the expansion tank and that will increase the flow rate. The coolant will continue to drain here for a little bit and it's a good time to inspect the fluid. If you've had any oil mixing in your coolant from compromised oil cooler seals or head gasket, you're definitely going to want to perform a flush of the system as well. But if it's generally clean, you can go ahead and return the drain plug and perform other work on the car until it's time to refill the system. You'll notice on these drain plugs that the O-ring is actually on the shaft of the screw, uh, so there's no need to over tighten these and if you do, you'll end up snapping the head off the bolt, just a plastic bolt. Uh, not to fear if that does happen because the tool markings go into the shaft, so you can still pull it out with a screwdriver, but you'll need to replace the drain plug, and they run about $10 a piece. With the radiator drained of coolant, we can move on to draining the engine block. To do so, there is a 13 millimeter drain bolt located on the lower rear of the engine block behind the exhaust manifold. Uh, just above the oil galley down there and it can be removed from above or below it just depends upon the extensions and joints that you have access to and if you have a smaller ratchet uh, you can get it from above it's only torqued to 15 foot pounds so shouldn't be too hard to break free but once it's open uh, be prepared for all the coolant to flow down the side of the engine block and onto the exhaust pipe and basically all down along the underside of the car and once you have your catch pan set up down there you can go ahead and pull the bolt out Once coolant has stopped draining from the engine block, you can go ahead and reinstall the drain bolt with a new crush washer. These are single use only and get mangled up pretty quickly. Uh, these are 8x14 aluminum ceiling ring and they're $2 from Porsche or $0.15 cents from generic sources. And when the bolt goes in, it gets torqued to a value of 15 foot-pounds. 
On the underside of the car, you can also wipe down the exhaust pipe a little bit of the excess coolant, and that will reduce some of the fumes that are created when that's burned off after the engine is started. With the coolant system fully drained and the drain plugs reinstalled, you can go ahead and perform any other service work on the car before beginning to refill the system. Before I refill the coolant, I wanted to provide an overview of the cooling system functionality. So the cooling system is comprised of the following main components. We have the coolant expansion tank, which leads to the radiator, where most of the coolant is stored and the electric fans mount, along with the water pump, and a series of hoses and pipes and connections that move fluid throughout the system. The water pump is the heart of the system. It's driven by the crankshaft in connection with the timing belt, which spins this pulley and turns an impeller inside the block and forces fluid in this direction, all through these water jackets to cool down the cylinders. And at the back of the system, it takes an upward turn into the cylinder head. So here's the underside of the cylinder head. We can see all these channels and cavities where fluid can pass through. And the four along the bottom are the oil passages that supply oil to the camshaft housing. The circular ones are just passed through for the mounting studs, but all these other ones are coolant passages so that the valves and the combustion area can be cooled as well. And when the head gasket is applied, it blocks most of those off to allow for directional flow. So only these ones at the rear are open. So it moves through here and exits this water channel here, which dumps out back into the block by these temperature sensors underneath the water pump and continues to drive it. So the system is essentially making a vertical circle to cool things that way. And it's also making a little loop through the oil cooler housing to cool down the oil. So it goes in and comes back out through the block. In the back of the system, there is a flange on the cylinder head, which supplies fluid through the heater control valve and into the cabin underneath the dash, the, the heat exchanger, and empties through the heater return pipe, back through the water pump. So it's doing another loop that way to heat the car. And inside the water pump is a thermostat, spring plate, a uh, gated system that is closed until it reaches a temperature of about 80 degrees Celsius when it begins to open and it's fully open at 90 degrees Celsius or 194 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, fluid can be drawn from the bottom of the radiator through the water pump that creates space in the radiator to allow coolant passing through the head to travel through this line at the top of the radiator, passing through all these fins and the electric fans to dissipate the heat. And so there's another loop going that way. But the intent of the closed system is to allow the engine to reach operating temperature more quickly upon startup. And that way the oil is at the appropriate temperature to properly lubricate all the moving parts of the engine. The other lines are up here, so there is an expansion line at the top of the radiator that will send additional air in the system to the tank. And in this cap is a, a spring, so if this reaches a certain pressure, 5 or 10 psi, it will expel coolant from the system down through this line if it's overfilled or if there's too much pressure. So when we think about these components and how they work together, when we refill the system, if we simply refill the tank and the radiator, that connects down here, it's going to be nearly impossible for the fluid to go all the way up to the highest point of the engine and then fill the block as well. So it's important that we fill the engine block separately 
with coolant as well as refill the main system and the radiator. And by doing so, we'll have far fewer air pockets and other issues um, inside the system. And it's a lot easier to vent that way and get things up and running as easy as possible. So that's what we'll do. To begin filling the coolant system, you'll need two gallons of coolant, a funnel, and some cat rags. It doesn't so much matter what color the coolant is because manufacturers have different colors for different applications, but just check the container to make sure that it is applicable to the Porsche 944 because of the aluminum block. We'll begin filling the block using the upper radiator hose disconnected from the radiator side. Loosen the 12 millimeter venting bowl and place some cat rags all around that area and lift the hose up, put the funnel in and begin filling the block. When a steady stream of coolant begins flowing from the venting bolt, you can secure it down and reattach the radiator hose to the radiator. We'll then fill the rest of the system from the coolant expansion tank and go ahead and fill the radiator and the tank until you reach the uh, area between the minimum and maximum level. And now the system is as full as you can get it before pressurization. Before we begin pressurization and venting at the water neck here, it helps to have this point in the engine elevated even higher off the ground. So if you can get the front of the car raised 12 inches or more, it helps work the air up and out of the system. To pressurize the system, you can use a coolant pressure tester or the gravity fill method. If you have the pressure tester, just attach it to the tank and pressurize the system not to exceed 10 PSI and continue to vent at the water neck until all the air is escaped and a steady stream is now flowing from the top. Close it down and you're good to go. If you're using the gravity fill method, we'll need to vent for some additional cycles. So at this point, go ahead and start the car. Make sure that the HVAC system is set to full heat and we'll need to run the car until it reaches operating temperature. So the two gates in the system are the heater control valve and the thermostat in the water pump and we need both of those to be open to evacuate all the air from all the different cavities in the system and once you've run the car to operating temperature the temperature gauge on the dash should be just under the halfway mark and the electric fans will kick on at that point you'll know that the thermostat is open and fluid is moving throughout the entire system and we can go ahead and begin the venting process so go ahead and turn off the engine and vent the system at the venting bolt catch any coolant that escapes and you may need to run the engine for two to three more heat cycles to fully bleed all the air out. As you continue to vent the system and remove the air pockets, go ahead and check the fluid level at the coolant expansion tank. If it's fallen below that minimum level, you may need to add some more coolant and top it up and just continue the venting process until no more air escapes from the venting valve and then the car will be ready for normal operation.